So at the moment in our application, this table here is hard coded into the parent blade view. But with this, we lose a little bit of flexibility in the fact that we can't put this table anywhere else. So what I'm going to do is share a technique with you of creating a dedicated blade component. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do this, but it's a good technique to learn and understand when working with Laravel as it helps you keep your code dry and it stops you repeating front end code. So it makes it much easier if you make a change in one place, it'll happen everywhere in your UI then. So over in the terminal, let's create that new component now. So I'm going to do a PHP artisan make colon component. And I'm going to call this component the document table. You notice the name of it there It is in camel case. Okay, that made the component for us. Now let's check this out in our editor. So I'm coming over to the project and then under app, we have a view folder and components and there's our new document table component. Now let's open this. Now for this to work, we need to pass in the documents. So I'm going to create a new public property on this component. So I'm going to say public and I'm going to call this documents. And then in the constructor, we can just pass this in so we can say documents. And then we can simply say this documents equals documents. And then what this allows us to do is when we call, and what this allows us to do is when we call the document table blade component, we can pass in a extra parameter and that extra parameter gets passed in here in the constructor as documents. And then we attach it to the component view this public property here. This documents is equal to whatever is passed in by the constructor. So I'll show you an example of that now. So over in our index.blade.php, just below our search and upload button, here we have the div with all of our table code inside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and cut it out. And then over in the project, under resources, views, components, you'll be able to see now our document table.blade.php. And you'll notice here the naming of it has changed to document hyphen table even though we created it with camel case. And this is just a Laravel convention, so don't worry about it too much. And then inside of here, we need to leave the parent div in there and then paste in our table. Okay, so now back over in our index.blade.php. So where our table was in our index.blade.php, we can now just bring in our component. So here I'm calling x hyphen document hyphen table. And remember that takes something into its constructor called documents. So we can do a colon and say documents. And then we just pass in in a string the variable of documents. So we do a dollar sign and we say documents. Then we just close this off. So what this is doing, this is passing into the constructor something called documents. And the variable inside of a string is coming from blade. So anything you pass down to the blade view can be passed in here. So let's just show you this in action now. Over in our documents, if we hit the documents tab, we should see the exact same table and all the documents listed in, but this is now extracted away inside of a component. Let's try and search. So I'm going to search for logging. You can see there it works in the exact same way. It returns the page with the blade component in its place. Now, if this hasn't worked for you, you may need to clear your views. So if you're not sure how to do that over in your terminal, you can just do a sale artisan view colon clear and then that will clear any of the cache views that may be preventing this component from showing and as you've probably noticed here i haven't actually copied across the pagination as well so let's put that into the component so below the table i'm just going to paste in that pagination and that's just the same as before we just got a bit of styling and the document links let's give this a refresh we see i have our pagination back in let's go to page two and so on so the pagination still works inside of our component. Okay, so now we've done this, we're going to be introducing a bug. And the bug is that we won't be able to paginate on our search results. So let's just jump over to our controller. And in our search method, I'm just going to paginate from five down to one. Let's save on this. Now let's try and do a search. So in the search, I'm going to search for auth. Now let's hit search. And it brings back one document on this page as we expect. Now what's what happens when we try and paginate to page two? We get a 404 not found and that is because this route is expecting a post and it's also not respecting the query string parameters attached on the end so let's fix that now so over in our routes on the web 
let's change this from a post to a get. And then in our index.blade.php, we need to change the form method from post to get. Now let's try this out in the browser. So over on our documents page, let's try and do a search again this time. Then just like before, this works in the same way. However, you can see now in our URL, because it's sending it as a get request, we have the token and we also have the term equal to auth. Now let's look what happens when we try and paginate away from this page. So let's try page two. And you can see here now, we are actually returning all 11 of our documents. So we've actually lost our search. And the reason why this has happened is because there's no term in the URL anymore. So one final thing we need to do is attach that term onto our URL. So back over in our controller, after our search here, we can say documents and we want to append. And then this takes in an array of key value pairs. And we want to append on the URL a term. And this is going to be equal to the current request and term. This will append on the term. So when the user paginates to the next page and it comes back into search, it will have the term inside of the request still. But one final thing as well, because now we're sending this by get, we no longer need to pass the token over. So over in our index.blade.php file, let's get rid of that CSRF token. And now let's just give this a try. So back over the browser, I'm going back to documents. And now let's try and search for auth again. And we're going to hit search. And you see there now that tags on the term equal to auth. And because we've added that append method, we should now get that for each of our paginated pages. So as you can see for the term auth, we have three results. Now let's go to page two. And you can see here, we still have three results. And on the end, it's tagged on the term auth. So now our pagination remains the same all the way through and it keeps our search term in place. So one final thing we might want to do is populate that search box with the term if there is one set. But personally, I prefer to leave that blank and just reset it to empty so the user can search again. The added advantage to doing it this way via get as well that the URL is now shareable. So if a user was to send this over to somebody, they would be able to copy and paste it in and they'd get the results back. Let me show you an example here. So after search, we can say term and let's set this term to session. Now hit enter on this. It shows us the filtered results that have been searched for with the term session. And now this URL here is shareable. So one user could send it to another if they've searched down the certain documents that they're after. Okay, so let's quickly put the pagination back up. So in the document controller in our search, let's change this up to five again. Now we actually have a bit of repetition here. We have a pagination of five here, and we also have a pagination of five up in our index method. So let's extract that away so we don't have to keep repeating it. So I'm just gonna create a private property here, our pagination amount, and I'm gonna set this equal to five. And then inside the pagination here, I can say this pagination amount, then the same again for our search method down the bottom of this file. Change that five to this pagination amount. So now we can actually change the pagination amount just at the top of the file here instead of having to do it in each individual function. Okay, so now we have our search page up and running. The next thing we're going to do is look at the download and delete methods. If you are enjoying this series, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get updates as and when future videos are released on this series. Also, check out the other series on my channel. I have a lot of Laravel related content on there. And remember, this course does come with some extra premium content that is completely optional. And that is over on Udemy. And I'll pop a link in the description with a 60% discount code for the first 100 signups. And you can watch the entire series straight away without any adverts.